Hello, Lou Hamilton here again from Audible Elegance in Cincinnati, Ohio, just a few doors north of the Montgomery Inn in Old Montgomery. And tonight we're going to talk about subwoofers. And subwoofers are probably the most misunderstood piece in any audio system or theater system for that matter. And they've developed a sort of, I would call compulsory ownership, would be the only way of describing it. It goes back to the days, I remember in the 70s, when we did not have subwoofers where your system wasn't complete unless you went out and bought the obligatory Cost Pro 4 AA headphones, which most of them rotted in the drawers anyway because nobody used them. Um, I'm not a fan of subwoofer ownership as a general rule of thumb because in a nutshell, a subwoofer should only be added when there is a deficiency, uh, a true deficiency in, in low frequency performance. Um, there's a lot of care and effort taken um, to align drivers, for example, on the March and Logans here, uh, or you know, the totems across the room, so that the pressure wave that comes off of any frequency of the speaker is time aligned. And inherently a subwoofer is not going to be time aligned. And so you can wind up creating um, an amusical or system, be it theater or um, music, more often it shows up really ugly in, in music, um, which is part of the reason I, I'm not a fan of them. And subwoofers got mislabeled is the only way of describing it. And this all started under um, the Bose Acoustamass system, where you could buy these little tiny satellites and you would buy this box and they called it a subwoofer. Well, those little tiny cubes couldn't, you know, blow a fart of bass out of them because of the size of the drivers. So they actually had to add a bass unit. And that's really what it was, was an outboard bass unit. And of course, we talk about time alignment and you can kiss that one goodbye real quick because they were up on the wall someplace, the woofer was over behind the couch and you know, that was that. So uh, they developed a kind of a misidentification of what they really were and what they were meant to do. Uh, I had a customer in today listening to a set of speakers. He was completely enamored with his performance. And the first question out of his mouth was, where's the subwoofer? Well, the speakers are rated from 30 to 20,000 hertz. Um, they're full range. And so they should be able to effectively cover um, the low frequency performances that were needed, and it does. Now, subwoofers got a second life, in a way, or a new life, when home theater came along, because a lot of the movies, um, well, they electronically did what we used to do in the old day when you had an equalizer, you'd make a smile out of it, and you'd boost the shit out of the bass. Um, but they were trying to introduce what, what I would call a fun factor of thump therapy. And there's a place for that too, but if they're added in such a way that detracts from the musical performance, then it, it's clearly also not a helping in the steering logic of the, of the, of the, you know, the theater system itself as well. The, the use of subwoofers um, can also come into play where you don't have particularly good power um, driving the main set of speakers. And the low frequencies are what consume the most amount of power from an amplifier. So a, a lot of the home theater systems uh, using, you know, fairly inexpensive um, receivers, um, if you attempted to play them really loud and get the bass performance out of them, uh, you might actually essentially underdrive the speakers and damage them or damage the receiver itself. So subwoofers helped 
<coughs> avoid uh, cat, you know, catastrophic issues. The subwoofer should be looked at as a cherry on top of a sundae. In other words, the whole system should really be screwed and glued together, performing very well. And if I bring a subwoofer into the system, that its effect should be uh, additive to the overall experience rather than subtractive. In most cases, it's very subtractive. And uh, that could be a combination of the quality of the subwoofer, the speed of the, of the base performance itself, and I've covered in, in other videos, it's positioning in the room, um, uh, and naming a whole bunch of factors that goes into it. But a lot of people misunderstand, you know, when do you need a subwoofer? If you have a full range speaker and you have a reasonable size room, let's say 12 by 16, 12 by 17, 18, you know, something like that, you should be able to get sufficient bass performance out of a full range speaker system for music. There's very little need for a subwoofer. Um, that reminds me of a case where we had a guy who had uh, Bauer and Wilkins 801s, the, more of the latest models, and flanking them were two gigantic subwoofers. And, you know, I don't understand why you would want that much performance in the side, you know, in the room that he had. But and it, it gets into that sort of, if I don't have a subwoofer, my system isn't complete. And that's not true. Um, the addition, the improper addition of a subwoofer will make the system incomplete. So you gotta be really careful about that. Um, subwoofers can come into play even with full range speakers if you're talking um, a very, you know, fairly large room. But keep in mind um, that, you know, a subwoofer has its limitations as to how effective it will be in a very large room, which is why some people will use two of them. Uh, some theaters, uh, they may actually place have two in the forward and stick one in the rear for bass performance. Uh, my answer to that it, traditionally is my rear speakers should have full range performance on their own because now I'm not steering, screwing up the steering logic and the timing that they set up um, in their work and, and panning things front to back. It, it's kind of like when I listen to a home theater system and I'm tempted to turn around and look at the rear speakers, that's the mark of a really bad home theater because the picture is only here. You know, you're not dealing with, with a Disneyland 360 theater. So if you're tempted to turn away from looking forward, um, that's defeating the purpose of even having a video. And the same thing can happen with subwoofers up the front. If you're distracted by looking um, over at the subwoofer as opposed to looking at the picture in, in a theater situation, again, that's a negative. That's taking away from what the entire package should be doing. Sincerely, my recommendation is to get your system working as well as you can and then add the subwoofer as a final event. Because if um, the addition of the subwoofer uh, causes the music to what I call stomp and drag, it's really defeating the, system, you know, the design of what you invested in already. Uh, it's almost like adding a large trailer to a very fuel efficient car. Its performance just goes right into the ash can, not to mention you can't steer it. So um, be careful about subwoofers. Work with the dealer. Uh, if you can borrow a subwoofer, that's fine. The better thing to do is to set up an arrangement where they come out with the subwoofer um, and, and help you understand what's going on. Now, you're not going to get that type of service if you're looking to buy a five or six or seven hundred dollar subwoofer. Now, otherwise, you're going to have to pay them a good amount of money for their time and effort to go through all of that. So don't expect, you know, that you're being mistreated if you want to buy a four hundred dollar, five hundred dollar subwoofer, but you want them to come out and show you how it works. No, it, it doesn't work that way. It can't. 
Um, if you're getting more serious, maybe. It all depends how serious you get. And um, But understanding your system before you even step forward for a subwoofer is really the key. So let's say you do want to give, uh, add a subwoofer to the system. My recommendation is starting out is to set the subwoofer uh, at its, basically its lowest setting. So it, it's present in, in a very deep netherworld sort of range, but not interfering with uh, a doubling or, or interfering with the performance as you go up the frequency range. If that works successfully, then go ahead and nudge it up um, 5 hertz, 10 hertz, depending upon whether it's a variable knob or fixed, and slowly raise it until the system begins to disintegrate sonically. And that's the best way of starting to integrate uh, a subwoofer. In home theaters, I typically will take that crossover point about as low as I possibly can and then start going up the same way and listening to what happens. And don't just use one movie, okay? Um, you know, Die Hard or anything like that. Use a range of movies so you understand that you're trying to trim the subwoofer for performances on all genre of, of theater or, or all genre of, of music. Because keep in mind that each individual selection is going to be equalized in and of themselves. Um, this can happen in music quite a bit. It's not unusual. Uh, I've heard it on some of the Santana recordings, the more recent ones, where the bass output is remarkable, you know, if you put it on a boom box. And the minute you put it on, on a regular audio system, it's just, you know, egregious thump therapy. And that's because they recognized what the market was for their music and who they were selling to and what they were likely to own to play that music. So they're trying to deliver pleasure to their buyers. Um, and if you're going to assume that every recording is done flat, well, you're sadly mistaken, they're not. Um, they're adjusted not only at the recording session, um, they may change um, the equalization in a, in a different in a mix down. It gets to the production plant. They have a chance to equalize it and change it there. So there's a lot of possibilities for fingers in the pie for both movies as well as uh, theater, or pardon me, for, for music. So um, that's where I would start out with the very low and then slowly creep it in. But if you find that you're very low and you slightly creep it in um, and it goes to crap real quick, then you really need to ask your question, could I reposition my speakers to get that final little niche and I don't need the subwoofer at all? So I say, uh, they should be a cherry on top of the sundae, you know, um, not a banana put on top.